September 24th, above Utah's desert, we will see asteroid Bennu's sample return from the OSIRIS-REx mission that left many years ago and is finally returning for us to figure out what is on this primordial asteroid and what it can tell us about what we should be looking for in other solar systems that could harbor life. This is Today in Space. Let's jump into it. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to a quick episode of Today in Space. Here we're recording this for the day that the return sample from OSIRIS-REx should be delivering the sample of asteroid Bennu above the Department of Defense's Utah Test and Training Range. Now, OSIRIS-REx is a mission that launched September 8th, 2016. We're going to talk about what it is. We're going to talk about what Bennu, asteroid Bennu is. We're going to talk about how it got the sample and why this is so important to us from a scientific perspective, but also from a human perspective and what this tells us about reality and the universe around us. So I'm your space science podcast host from the East Coast, Alex G. Orfanos. So let's get right into it and talk about the what, how, and why of the OSIRIS-REx and asteroid Bennu sample return. So OSIRIS-REx stands for Origins Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, and Security Regolith Explorer, or OSIRIS-REx. And I was a very big fan back then of the unofficial patch that shows this Tyrannosaurus Rex <laughs> uh, almost swallowing the spacecraft and asteroid Bennu. It's a really cool mission that is going to show us kind of this relic from our solar system and what it has on its surface is super important. Now, the spacecraft OSIRIS-REx is very interesting because you have to have this spacecraft that goes to this asteroid and then reaches out this extender arm to touch down on the surface at the right place to kick up dust, suck up whatever it can in this container, and come back away from the asteroid safely, tuck that sample into the belly of OSIRIS-REx, and then launch that little capsule back to Earth so that we can learn more about this actual orbital body. So what is asteroid Bennu, and why would we go to this rock in the middle of our solar system? Well, the first big reason is that it's very, very old. So old, in fact, that it's probably been mostly undisturbed other than natural events, you know, heating up and cooling down of the surface over time as it orbits the sun, but undisturbed for billions of years. So not only is it something that's close within our solar system and within our capability of sending a spacecraft there, but it also has carbon. And because it's so untouched, the idea is that scientists believe this was formed in the first 10 million years of our solar system's history, over 4.5 billion years ago. And there's a little something called the Yarkovsky effect, which we talked about the f back in 2016 when this mission first started. There has been a slight push created as the asteroid absorbs sunlight and then re-emits that energy and heat the gravitational tug from celestial bodies as well has actually brought the asteroid closer and closer to us here on Earth, almost begging for us to search it. So that's why a mission like this could work is because this arm could come in, release the dust from the surface because it's untouched, remember. So all the powder and stuff that gravity attracted after the huge chaos of the early days of our solar system as all the planets are are clearing out their orbits and rounding out and all of those things. Bennu stayed this pristine evidence of what our solar system looked like back then, which for us is super important for many reasons, but we'll touch on that in just a second. The last thing about Bennu is that it's actually, due to its proximity and its size and position, it's close enough to Earth that within the next century, there is a small chance that we could impact with Bennu. And that would not be good because this asteroid has enough speed and power to do devastating things. You know, between the years 2175 and 2199, the chance that Bennu will impact Earth is only 1 in 2700, but that's really, really big odds when you're considering 
all the other stuff that's out there that doesn't hit us. And we just saw with that recent mission, the DART mission, we now know that we have the technological capability to move an asteroid that could impact us. So because it's within our own solar system and we're going to learn more about it with the asteroid sample, we're actually in the best spot we could be in to protect ourselves from this asteroid in the future with just a kinetic impact. So luckily, the Armageddon memes aren't really that relevant. And really, we're living in this time where just five years ago, there was no plan to defend ourselves from an asteroid other than the hilarious toss a nuke at it that we've had before, we're now in a better spot than we ever were before. So why is OSIRIS-REx important? OSIRIS-REx's mission has shown us that we can travel our solar system with spacecraft and robotic technology and recover soil from another surface and bring it back to us for analysis. This is hugely important because human spaceflight is extremely difficult and we know with this big jump in advance of human space travel we have, even just to the edge of space, the Kármán line here on Earth, those missions are happening more and more, but they cost more and more. And when you're trying to balance budgets as a place like NASA, where all these studies are asking for funding and there's only so much that goes around, a mission like OSIRIS-REx to the asteroid Bennu provides us the opportunity to learn more about our own solar system so that we can look out into other places with things like Hubble and James Webb Space Telescope and more and have a better idea of what our solar system had inside it from the surface of Bennu so that we can look for those places and refine our search instead of trying to observe everything in the universe. Let's focus on the things that we know could have life like ours or at least life like we know it. So it's a budget-friendly way for us to really learn a large amount. And luckily, the engineers behind this technology to gather the sample return did a great job. And we're going to see the results here after it lands successfully on September 24th in Utah. Now, why is asteroid Bennu important? We kind of touched it on already. But it is like tapping into the DNA of our solar system. We only have ideas and models about how things developed. Even with James Webb Space Telescope, our understanding of galaxies and how they formed seemed like it was the most up-to-date as possible. And then something like James Webb comes along and is making it so that we have to rewrite those books because they formed way earlier in the universe than we ever would have expected them. So learning more about the clues of our early solar system and how the soul system created things and the ingredients it had to bake the cake that is our solar system, we can then look for those ingredients elsewhere. So if you really do want to find aliens, this kind of a mission is really important because, again, just like NASA's approach of trying to dial in what is hay so we can filter out that to find the interstellar or alien needle in the haystack, this is one of those missions that's going to give us huge fundamental data to do something like that. And just like we talked about with Avi Loeb's I Am One mission and how they took the spherules they found on the surface of the ocean, they brought it back and distributed it to a bunch of agencies to do research so we can find out what everybody found that's the same. Because if we're doing good science and we have good data and good samples, then multiple human beings running these tests under the same conditions is our filter. And then we can learn more about our own solar system. So it's a great moment for international partnership. We join the ranks of other agencies just like JAXA that recently brought home samples from another orbiting body. I know China plans to do so very soon and has already done so with the moon. We expect to see a lot more of this type of thing and humans finding our balance of robotic partners for us to travel the solar system so that we don't have to necessarily go ourselves and reduce the budget and risk of doing this kind of exploration around the solar system. And if we're really good, that means more missions around the solar system and the galaxy so that we can learn more about it with the money we have available to us as a country and U.S. taxpayers. Never mind the private companies that, as they grow bigger and find more business as the space industry grows, 
we may find some really fascinating missions to other places that are funded purely by private entities with organizations like JAXA and NASA backing them up along the way. So we're very excited to see what the asteroid Bennu tells us about our early solar system and to learn more about this potential hazardous object that we may experience some kind of an impact or close impact closer to the 2200s. But thanks to a lot of innovators, we now have the technology like the DART mission to deflect something like that. And the more we learn about it, the more we'll know about its orbit and how it changes over time. So we'll know the exact amount of kinematic impact to apply in the right place on that asteroid to let it miss us. So a really cool mission and one of the coolest unofficial space patches I've ever seen. So congratulations to the NASA team, to the OSIRIS-REx mission, and hopefully to the recovery team for the successful return of this pristine time capsule of what ingredients we had in the early days of the solar system. That's it for this episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Today in Space. We wish you nothing but the best. Spread love and spread science. Be well, and we'll see you on the next episode of Today in Space.